Hello, my friends. Good morning. May God bless you all. And may the Holy Spirit, the guide, the guide of God's children, enlighten your understanding, your understanding, dear friend, so that your penny may drop and you will understand His Word and with pleasure practice it. Pay attention. We spoke yesterday about Abraham's descendants and Abraham's children. Obviously, when Jesus speaks of Abraham's descendants, he was speaking about Abraham's DNA, like the rich man. The rich man who went to hell was Abraham's descendant. But he only recognized Abraham as his father when he was already in hell and it was too late. He was not a child of Abraham, meaning, pay attention, Abraham's descendant have his DNA. They were born of the flesh, but not of the spirit. The children of Abraham are those who lived by the faith of Abraham, not by faith in Abraham, but by the faith of Abraham in Abraham's God. And that's how Lazarus lived, by the door of that man who was filthy rich. So that filthy rich man thought that because he was wealthy, that was a sign that he was Abraham's child. Yeah, he thought he was his child, but he was just a descendant because he believed in Abraham's God, but he didn't practice the same belief Abraham did. He didn't practice. Lazarus, on the other hand, was poor, who lived on the other side of the spectrum. He believed in the God of Abraham, but he believed in a practical way. How so? What did he do to show that he believed in the God of Abraham? He was fallen there by the door, you know, struggling in need, ill, you know, full of wounds from head to toe. He was confined to misery, to a horrible life. However, within himself, and that's where the greatness of faith is, because within him, he carried that thought, one day my life will change, one day all of this will pass, one day I will no longer live in this sick body full of infirmity, which is weak and needy. I will live for all eternity with the God of my father Abraham. This means that he nourished a faith that only God could see and nobody else because people couldn't understand the faith of Lazarus because he was, you know, living a horrible life. But he hoped, he waited to one day no longer be in that body to be in spirit with God going against the doctrine of, of the Jews and Pharisees. He had within himself that hope of one day, one day it will end and I will be in the arms of my eternal father, the father of my father Abraham. And then Jesus was telling the Jews who believed in him, because when we believe in the word of God, it's not to believe just to take possession of the blessings from the word. No, because 
everyone does that. Even the ten leprous men were healed. And Jesus knew that only one would come back. The other nine were healed, were benefited, but they lost themselves. But the only one who came back, that one held on to Jesus. So there are many people inside of the churches who are living exactly like that. They have believed in their, let's say, in their father Abraham, or they have been believing in Jesus Christ as their Savior, but they only believe outwardly. They go to church, they say their prayers, they worship God, they are offering givers. More or less, you know, they try, you know, to make that way to remain there in the faith. Sometimes they are in sin, one day they sing, the other day they are there confessing their sins and seeking God, but then the following day they go back to sin again. So, this type of Christian, they satisfy themselves, they conform to this kind of life, of relationship, because they think that due to the fact of going to church, Oh, I believe in Jesus. Well, but even the demons believe. James said that. Even the demons believe. But they are still demons. What's the point of the person believing in Jesus and do their own will and not do his will? What's the point of a person believing in Jesus but not remain in the faith, in his word? That's what Jesus said. He said to the Jews and the disciples who were believing in him, if you abide in my word, he was speaking to the Jews who believed in him. He, he said, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Which means, the truth would come, would be revealed to them, and they would be delivered. But then they said, we are Abraham's descendants, meaning we, we are from Abraham's lineage. We have a father in faith who pleased God, which meant that they believed their faith was inclined towards the action of faith and the attitude of Abraham and not in the God of Abraham, meaning that they were religious. They practiced their religion. They were religious people, very strict. They were very staunch in, in their religious ways, but they were not of God, which is what happens a whole lot, but really a lot throughout the world. Unfortunately, we save one soul here, but on the other hand, the devil is there leading people to a religious feeling, to the sense, a feeling of spiritual well-being. So when they are in church, they feel good, they cry. They give the offerings, sacrifices, they praise and worship God. However, it's all from their mouth out because inwardly it doesn't make sense for them because they do not practice, they do not obey, do not follow the word of God. And we will be judged we are going to be judged not by the philosophy or religiousness, not because we belong to a church or we cast out demons. It's not because we heal the sick. No, we are going to be judged by our character, the spiritual character we have. God is a spirit, 
and the offering that he expects from us has to be spiritual which means that it has to be my essence, your essence. It's pointless for me to preach the gospel and pray for people and advise them and make a huge effort to help them. But if inside of me there is another man, another faith, faith in the things of this world, come on, dear friend, doesn't God see that? Doesn't he see what is inside of us? God is his spirit, Jesus said. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. In other words, those who give him offerings must offer spiritual offerings because he is his spirit. The offering has to carry within it, in its essence, the gratitude that the person has towards the Father. However, it's not the physical offering. It's not the physical offering that pleases God in that moment, for example, that will erase the sins that are committed daily. Fornication, lies, deceit, and so on. You know, malice, gossip. So, inside of the churches, there are many people who are deceiving themselves with their fake faith. Let's put it this way. Because they obey. Outwardly, it's easy for you to obey God, isn't it? It's easy for you to give offerings. It's easy for you to give your tithe, the first fruit to God. It's easy for you to say, oh Jesus, I praise you, I love you. Especially when there is song, there is a music. You play a beautiful song, you sing a beautiful hymn, and you dive in that emotion, and you feel good. You have that good feeling. But when you leave the church, then that good feeling stops being good when you have to face your accusers, you know, defamation, when you have to, to face the evil world. Then, if you, if you keep your spirit spiritual character, and instead of taking advantage of lies, you prefer to lose with the truth than to gain with lies. And it's what's been happening. So many people come to church, they give their offerings. It's easy to do that. But the character and be truthful and blameless and to have to have a character that is genuinely Christian, oh, this is difficult. And this is the offering that pleases God. The Jews here, they were saying, we are descendants of Abraham. But what would they do? They would do all sorts of wrong, commit all sorts of sins. And Jesus pointed, pointed his finger at them. And that's why he said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And he said even more, he said more, Most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. So it's pointless for a person to confess a Christian faith and to continue serving the devil, serving sin. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's pointless, because if the person lives in sin, they are a slave of sin. So how can a slave of sin a slave of sin live with God who is spirit and truth. How can a person who claim to have the Holy Spirit and is speaking in tongues, but they also speak lies, which is we see the most out there. How can a person who worships God with their praise, they have a beautiful voice, a beautiful song, but in the spirit, they live sleeping around, they live in sin. This person is a slave of sin. As Jesus said himself, that the slave doesn't abide in the house forever. Sooner or later, he will leave. And that's what we've seen. We've seen pastors 
bishops, people who said the word of God, who supposedly were of God, but they live in sin. Why? Because they were not born of the Holy Spirit. Their offerings didn't do any good. It didn't do them any good. It may have done good to others, but not to themselves. Because they presented an offering contaminated by sin. And God does not accept that. When we understand that God is a spirit, and that obviously expects us that we will also be spiritual to the point of presenting our lives with character, blamelessness, truth, integrity, husband of one wife, wife of one husband, children who respect their parents, parents who advise their children according to the truth, and things of this nature. So this is more than you come and saying, Oh, Jesus, I love you, I praise you. This is easy. But for you to live what you practice, what you say you believe, Believe, then, dear friend, that's when it's the, the question, the matter of whether or not you are of God. And you know that. Let me drink some water, please. The truth, dear friend, is that God is a spirit, and the offering presented to him has to be spiritual. It has to be spiritual. It has to be spiritual. God is a spirit, Jesus said to the Samaritan woman. And those who worship him, meaning those who serve him, those who offer him their offerings, they need to do so in spirit and truth, which means no lies, no deceit, no emotion, no pharisaism or hypocrisy. The person is transparent. He is my life, my father. If the person is a sinner, if the person is in the filthy of, of their sin, but they confess, oh my God, I've been doing wrong. I don't even deserve to be before you. I don't deserve to be here before your altar. But you are merciful. Have mercy on me. When the person has a heart like this, that is humble, contrite, repentant, then the Holy Spirit comes and receives that life as a living offering on his altar. Tomorrow we are going to talk more about this because we have to demystify that theory that the person is in the church, they serve God, they sing, dance, praise, they fall, they fall by, by the Spirit, they turn around in the Spirit, or they speak in tongues. And they think that this all will do as an offering for God. But it, it won't do. The offering, the true offering, is the one that carries within it a spiritual essence. It's truthful, honest, righteous. It doesn't live in lies. It doesn't speak lies. It doesn't gossip. It's a person that carries the image of God. The image of God is a righteous person. Look at Jesus as an example. Oh, Bishop, but Jesus is Jesus. Okay, then. Then look at Paul. Look at the disciples who are faithful and loyal. And you are going to see the image of God, the image that God wants you to reflect in this world so that He may be sanctified in your life. Tomorrow we we'll speak more about this. May God bless you and until then in Jesus' name. By the way, today, just like every Thursday, we are going to have pastors, bishops, who are well married, married for more than 30 years, husband of one wife, wife of one husband, men of integrity, people who have been fighting with us side by side on behalf of those who suffer preaching the gospel, so they, as examples, as role models, 
will serve as living witnesses that Jesus is alive. Tonight, come to receive the prayer from these men and women of God on your behalf, for those who are facing problems in their marriage. May God bless you, and until then, in the name of Jesus. Amen.